We're talking from Ezekiel. And uh, let's see what God has for us today. Only a few verses that I want to highlight from the book Ezekiel. And I believe in this season we need to make part of our lives, let it explode in us. Let's take it. Amen. Ezekiel, key theme I want to highlight today, as there's a lot of themes that you can take from the book. But today I want to say, know who is God. Know. You need to know who is the God. Who is the God in your life? Know who is the Lord in your life. Who is the one that you really serve? You see this man, and that, and that one is prophesying over the nation and over nations. Horrific things is going to happen. Major horrific things. Actually using a lot of drama. Prophetic drama in the book Ezekiel. But in all of that, more than 20 times that he will say, this is so that they will know that I am the Lord. So that they will know that I am the Lord. Sometimes we go through a lot of stuff, a lot of things. But God is not just saying, Okay, I will be with you through the fire. I will be with you through the storm. I will be with you through the desert, through the wilderness. But he wants you to come to a realization of who is he in your life. And that you will make a final decision. Who will be the Lord in your life? Who will be the Lord in your life? Let it be so in Jesus' name. And that things don't need to be so intensely shaken like it came through the prophet Ezekiel. Psalm 46 verse 10, talking about be still and know that I am God. God wants your attention. So that what? So that you will know all the answers? No. He wants your attention so that you will understand everything? No. He wants your attention so that you can understand who is He and how He wants to be your God. How he wants to be your God. And in this season, doesn't matter what we're going to go through, my brother, my sister, doesn't matter through the nation how everything is shaken and nobody can say what's happening tomorrow. In the beginning, a lot of guys were so saying like, this is going to happen and then we're going to look at this, 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 this. More and more I see guys saying, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Oh, so a lot of professional guys say, I don't know what to say what's going to happen. Oh yes, there's a lot of prophetic voices. There's a lot of voices going on. We can so easily be deceived, but in this, in this day I want you to, to arrest your heart to say, I want to know who is my God. And that God I will follow. Amen. 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 Start with Ezekiel 2, verse 2. There's one first. He said to me, Son of man, stand up on your feet, and I will speak to you. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet. Stand up on your feet, and I will speak to you. Now in the army, in these likes, we need to stand and stand on attention. It's all about give strict attention. Because something is going to happen. The commander is going to say something. Give attention. Arrest your focus. So when it's up to stand in the army, it's all about give strict attention. And later we will, will see in one of the major revelations that God gave Ezekiel, it was about this vast, amazing, big army that will stand to their feet. And I'm saying, you will decide who's the commander in chief in your life, in this season. But God is looking for such a company of people. And so the church will rise up in the nations as this company of people, not selfish, not focusing on themselves, not doing their own thing. But when the word is, is given, when the spirit is moving, they will just have this capacity to give attention. Amen. You'll find the guys, when they hear the word, oh, I've heard it before, you know, it's my second service. I know it now already. Okay, every revelation is spoken to you. Please pray for me also. But otherwise, when you have the opportunity to hear the word 
And if you are respectful with and if you are part of that type of company, you will give attention. When you hear the word, you will give attention. When the Spirit is in you and the Spirit is moving in you, and you are sensitive to the Spirit, when you hear the word, even if you've heard it the 20th time, you will give attention. Because the Spirit of God is reacting to the word of God. The Spirit of God is not reacting to other words, first of all. No. But the Spirit of God is, is faithful, committed to the Word of God to make it a reality, to, to let it be done, to let it be fulfilled in you, through you, with you. Because at the end of the day, Holy Spirit is putting always the focus on Christ. And when the Word is there, you take the Word, He wants to put the focus on Christ, it's going to show Christ to you through the Word. The living Word will be shown to you. The living word that, word that is called Jesus Christ. And you will see the living word. If you can stand to your feet, that means respectfully give attention to the authority that you are dealing with, that you are submitting to, that you are giving the honor to say, I'm focusing on whatever he's wanting to say. In fact, I first need to understand why left and why not going to the right. No, there's the only, there's a company of people that will rise up in the end time. And there's the guts to say, God, whatever you say, that I will do. Yes. Not about the principle. Not agreeing the, about the principle, but living the reality of that sentence. Yes. It's going to happen. Amen. I pray you will be part of it, that I will be part of it. Amen. Amen. As he spoke, the Spirit came into me and raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. Seven points, very short. Just write that down. First of all, he speaks. God speaks. My brother, my sister, God is speaking. If you're hearing him or not, God is speaking. But you will decide what to do about it. Number two, the Spirit fills. The Spirit will fill you up. When God speaks, the Holy Spirit is ready, ready, ready to fill you. Ready to fill you. The Holy Spirit is ready to fill you. If you are willing to take the word, the Holy Spirit is ready to fill you. When you heard the word that God said, the word that He gave His only begotten Son, so that you don't have to perish but have eternal life. And you took it and you said, Jesus Christ, be my Lord and Savior, I give my life unto you. The Holy Spirit was so ready to come in and bring the rebirth. And within a second, you became a child of God. Is that not what happened? That's how you became a child of God. It was a birthing from the Spirit. But that's not the end. That's the first time of the working of the Holy Spirit in you, when you became a child of God. But from there, every time you take the word, the Holy Spirit is so ready to do the next work in you, to give you the next breakthrough. To bring that what is from the Father and make it more and more a reality in your life. Just as He, within one second, when you surrender to God, made you a child of God and called you from darkness into His marvelous light that you will not burn forever in hell. That I can have hell on earth. No. I can have a struggle forever. I can have a struggle in my soul, in my flesh, till I die. Or I can hear the word. And when you start to read the word, tonight, today, as right now, next to you, so read the Holy Spirit, that if you, by God's grace, for 10 seconds, take 10 seconds of what I'm saying, and take it in your heart, the Holy Spirit is ready to raise you up yes. in that area of your life. Yes. And you will stand in that area of your life. Yes. He is so ready next to you. The enemy is also so ready that you will sleep when you hear the word. You've heard this before. Yeah, you've heard this before, you know? Yes, it's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> enemy is standing next to you and saying, yeah, 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 yeah. But the Holy Spirit is also so ready to make it a reality. Have the guts become that company of people. Yes. Amen. Amen. He is so faithful. He is so excited about the Word of God, the Holy Spirit. There's an excitement when the Spirit 
from the spirit that is living in you, and that is the spirit of God. He's excited to make God's word a reality in your life. So when you hear his word, God speaks. Spirit fills. When you take it, and number three, the spirit came into me, and he raised me to my feet. You will not be able to stand before the Lord. It's not for the spirit. You can hear the word. You can understand that God is speaking. If I understand you or not, God is speaking through His Word. I choose to believe it. And when I choose to believe the Word, and I say, I want to react to your Word, God. I want to obey your Word. Here I am. I'm standing in your Word. I'm standing for your Word. I'm standing out because of your Word. And when you make that decision, immediately the Spirit of God is there and He's raising you up to your feet to give attention. That's the breakthrough? No. That's number three. I stand. Number four, I hear. He says, I stand, he raised me to my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. Focus is, I heard him. I heard him speaking to me. When you can give respectful attention, you will hear him. You will hear your God. In the midst of stress, in the midst of the negativity, in the midst of depression, in the midst of whatever you go through. If you are willing not to respect what you go through, first of all, but respect your God, you will clearly hear what He's saying. Amen. You will clearly hear what He is saying. Hallelujah. You are still with me? Yes. Number four. Number five. He commands. I hear that He is speaking. And number five. Huh. He commands. And I want to say that, that he challenges. He will always challenge you. Not challenge you because he's opposing you. No, he's opposing your flesh. He will challenge you because he believes in you. Hello. He will challenge you because he believes in you. He spoke to Ezekiel. He said, You will speak. You commanded him. You will speak. They're not going to listen to you. You will not be successful. They will not obey your words. What an encouragement. But he said, If you don't speak, and they fall. I will hold you accountable, Ezekiel. I will hold you accountable if you don't speak. Hmm. Are you with me? God's going to make you a prophetic voice. And you better speak if you think they're going to listen or not. It's not about if you think they're going to listen or not. It's about you obeying God. And that's it. Be that prophetic voice in this season. Yes. Be that prophetic voice in this season. May God help you. That's number... Number five. Number six. I eat. He commands, number six, I eat. What, 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 what are we talking? Ezekiel 2 verse 8. But you, son of man, listen to what I say to you. Do not rebel like the rebellious people. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. When God is speaking, you need to hear. No, when God is speaking, you need to eat. Hello. That eat has the context of you really make it part of your life. You really make it part of your life. You will eat the fruit of your lips. Hello. You know that scripture, eh? Proverbs 18, 21. Proverbs 18, verse 21. I have lived in the power of the tongue, those who use it will eat the fruit thereof. I don't need to. Afrikaans is like, how do you know this of you? What is it? When you're saying like that, I will not eat up your nonsense. You don't find such a thing. Exactly. You find such a thing. Okay. Thank you. Now that maybe comes from the Bible. You never know. But uh, from this place, we can't see. You eat what I say. And, you know, you eat. It's not like you talk back. He says, open your mouth wide. So there's no time for you to speak anything. I'm speaking and you eat what I'm saying. Eat, I eat, and then lastly I obey. 
I obey. May those principles work for you in your life, in Jesus' name. Amen. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Verse 6 and verse 7. Do not be afraid. You must speak my words to them, whether they listen or fail to listen, for they are rebellious. But you, son of man, but you, 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 listen to what I say. Open your mouth and eat what I give you. Chapter 3, verse 1. Eat what is before you. Eat the scroll. Then go and speak to the people. My problem is we eat sometimes a lot of rubbish. We eat sometimes a lot of other stuff. And then we want to speak to the people. I eat up a lot of stuff and even maybe deception in this season. You will hear what a lot of people will say. Then you will not speak. But what we've eaten has a lot of poison. What you've eaten was not from God. That was what the devil dished out to you, or your flesh, or your own opinion, or your circumstances, whatever. They also come and say, here, you can eat. And some of those stuff, unfortunately, tastes very good in the beginning. But at the end of the door, the day, poison is there. That's where, at some stage here in the, in the book, cuts into him a, a lot of rubbish that he had to cook. That he had to cook it. I don't know what's in, in English. On, on, on human thesis. You know what that is? It's a very holy word or something. It's coming from me. And God said to him, This is what you will put in the pot and you will cook it for the excreta from the, the trap coming from. <coughs> Humans. I just laughed in Afrikaans. He said, Ah, oh, here. The first time I ever read that, I just laughed. And I said, Oh, I would have said exactly that. Ah, oh, here. <laughs> I've never found myself. I never did this. I never did that. And then God said, Okay, you can use cow dung. <laughs> it was nice for me, precious. How oh, he was just speaking about, Oh, yes, Lord, I understand the, the message, but please. I knew something else, and God said, okay. God changed his mind. In the drama that he wrote, the script. <laughs> he said, okay, you can use some countdown. But what was he saying? The rubbish coming from our life. When the rubbish from our life, we cook up some addiction, some things for people around us. And it's polluted, it's disgusting. Because if you read through Ezekiel, there's a lot of stuff that is rough, what he said there. A lot of rough stuff. Okay, he's saying it's disgusting what my people are doing. But so many times, more than many times, this is so that they will know that I am God. And not just I am God, but many times he said that I am their God. That I didn't change. My commitment didn't change. I am still here. I am still there. If they would say to me, I am still here. I am still here. I still want to identify myself with them because I want them to be a people for me. For me to be my nation. My people. Hallelujah. God's going to help us. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? From there. What's the next scripture? Were you in the first service? Chapter 11, verse 19 and 20. Okay. I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people, and I will be their God. If they obey, if they change, if they are open to me, if they repent, if they come to me, what will God do with you? God will help you that you will not just go astray again, so that you will not just turn around and then go back into the rubbish. If you really come to God, God will give you a heart that's undivided. Because if it's divided, you're going to fall. Foundation. It's cracked the house that you built with your life has gone and fall, finished. But an undivided heart with God, you will receive from heaven everything God has for you when you sit with that undivided heart. Undivided heart means an open heaven. 
Undivided heart unlocked the heavens. You can write that down. Undivided heart unlocked the heavens, opened the heavens. The heavens are open when your heart is undivided. Oh my God. That's the key. I will give you my undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. Is it not what happens with rebirth? Immediately there's a new spirit in you. And that from your spirit you will worship him in spirit and truth. Amen. Live from your spirit, not from your soul. I will remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. My brother, my sister, so many times with a heart of stone. And there's a stone in here. It's going to crush some things that's beautiful in you. That stone in here is going to hurt yourself. It's not the heart of stone that you cannot hear from God, cannot receive from Him. Yes, that's true. You cannot put that something in your heart of stone. It's impossible. Because your heart is blocking whatever God wants to give you. So the one who is losing in everything is it's you. It's you locking. That what must come from heaven to you. You're going to hurt yourself first of all with that heart of stone. When you know, when, you, when people speak, even when people speak the word of God, that you are actually, your heart is closed. Because you look at personality, you cannot look in the spirit. You've taught yourself to look in the flesh and not in the spirit. You cannot see what God sees. No, that's not like that anymore in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So may God help you, may God help me. And with that heart of stone that we can hurt one another, first of all, you crush things that are beautiful in your own life. Don't do that. Have a heart that is open, that is teachable, that is flexible, full of God's grace, full of His love, full of His mercy. That's the definition of a heart of flesh. Have the guts to be humble. Have the guts, the guts to be a servant, not because of a curse of slavery, but a servant because of the honor in serving the Lord and do everything as if unto the Lord. Amen. Amen. Then they will follow. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Not, I'm careful to make sure that you know my opinion. I'm careful with my, with my thoughts and with my emotions the way that I want it. But you treasure what is precious to you. You treasure what is precious to you. So when it says be careful to keep be careful to keep. It's, you treasure what God is saying. You treasure what God is saying. You handle it with care because it's precious to you, His word. It's precious for you, to you. His principles, the way He wants things to happen, it's precious to you. Amen. Careful to keep my laws. They will be my people and I will be their God. At the end of the day, with so many revelations in the book Ezekiel through other prophets being explained in the book Hebrews again about the new covenant, how God in the new covenant he will write his laws in my heart, write his laws in my mind, you will forget, you will forgive and forget. Hello? And we will be his people, he will be our God. See this through the, the prophets, we see it in Hebrews, we see it in Revelation. At the end of the day, when in God's dealings with you, even through the prophet Ezekiel, when it's rough, when there's a lot of rough stuff happening out there, God says, final sentence, I will be your God, you will be my people. Amen. That's his dream. Yes. He wants you to be his people. Amen. Not, I will be your God and you as a person can be my child. No. God died for the people. For God so loved the world. Yes, personal. You better make it personal. For God so loved you. But always in the context of the people. If you grow up in maturity, you will know how to relate to the body of Christ. So easily we can stand on right and wrong. So easily we can say everything that is right or everything that is wrong. But it doesn't come from a heart of grace and a heart of love. That you love that person and say, God help me because I can make ten times more mistakes than that person. Then you're not working with God, you're not in His agenda. No. In everything you do, in everything you plan, in everything you desire, in everything that you do with people, 
or dream, at the end of the day you must say, so that I can be part of his people and he will always be my God. That's end of the day, the purpose. In everything, in everything, in everything. Even when God shakes his people and shakes the nation, even if he causes the fear to come upon the nations and the frailty of who am I? I'm just uncross. Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, then we have a cross. One day there, one day gone. <laughs> Is that not what such a lot of people, billions, not millions, billions of people today realize? We have a cross. One day I can be here. <laughs> Next day gone. Okay, some ignorant don't even know. But may God's grace be upon us. May God's grace be upon us, guys. If you will understand, God has an agenda. He wants the nations to know that He is God. That He wants to be their God. And He wants you to be His people. You are spoken to in the context of a group. So if you can live with maturity in a spiritual family, in a family context, and it's not tomorrow you offended, the day after that, if that person is not doing what you expect, then you are reasoning, I'm right, he's wrong, he's, he's unfair, he listen. You sit with that issues all the time. Somewhere you need to be shaken by the Holy Spirit, and somewhere so that we can grow up and become mature. And then you know, you will know that you are walking with the God if you can be part of that people. That means you can be part of his dream that he dreamt about. I can live my father's dream. I can be part of my father's dream if I'm part of the people. Not if I am just a child of God, but if I'm part of a people. Because his dream wasn't you alone. His dream is a people. Yes. A peculiar people. Yes. 1 Peter 2. Confirming the New Testament also. Amen. Then after that, next scripture. Help me. We need to scream at him. 20, verse 19 and 20. Just confirming that. Verse 19. I am the Lord your God. Follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Keep my Sabbaths holy and that they may be a sign between me and you. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. Then you will know. It's so important for God that you will know that He is your Lord. Then you will know that I am the Lord, your God. A lot of shaking. And then you pray that the shaking will stop, that the breakthrough will come. But for your definition of breakthrough is not the definition that God has for breakthrough. Breakthrough for God is that you will know that He is your God. And that you have the capacity to, doesn't matter what we go through, in the nations, that the nations will realize God gave Himself for us. God is the only God. We talked about that in the book Daniel. How all the heathen kings said, There is no other God except the God of Daniel, the God of His friends. Hello? And that is God's agenda that you will have the capacity to say, Whatever we go through, I acknowledge, I say, I give attention. Not to the things that we go through, not to the things, first of all. Not even to the things of what I'm negative about, or depressed about. I will not focus on myself on my depression or, or anger or frustrations. No, let, let your frustration be God. It's okay. But if things are shaken, it's like you brought it on yourself. God have grace on me, have grace on us. That in whatever I go through, I will say, God, I acknowledge you in your life. I will give attention to you. For whatever you say, I will not give attention so that I have an answer for my question. 
Yes, I would love that, Lord, please. I put my desires before you as you said in the word, I must do. But no thanksgiving, and in the context of you the center. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the answer or wait on the Lord? Uh, wait on the Lord. Yes. Amen? The word says. You still don't know the answer. No, you still don't know that I am God. That I am in control. When I wrote that song, it was because I was in a place being stressed out and being this and being that and being that. And God shoot me in a loving way. And out of that, I wrote the song, The Stillness of Who You Are, I Find, I find Peace. And at the end of the day, I find peace and peace is finding me because I know that you know. And the fact that God is your God and you, and when you say He is my God, means He knows everything and He knows so much better than what I know. And the fact that I know that He knows everything, not the fact that I know exactly what to do and what not to do and I know because I understand, no. I know that he understands, I know that he knows. And that place is giving you peace. Peace comes from a place of humility and that you have the, the guts to honor and respect him as the final authority. Amen. From that place you can have a peace. Amen. That child has this childish, not in a bad way, faith that if I'm with dad, everything is fine. That little child running to his mummy and when he works with mummy, he feels everything is safe. When you look at the facts, when you're older, you can think, little baby, mm, doesn't mean everything is fine. When you look at facts, that we need to have childlike faith, the word says. That in the midst of whatever, your childlike faith is that you will run to your God and say, God, I know that you're my God. And because I know who you are, that child knows, that little baby knows, that's my mummy. And you will run to his daddy, to his mommy. And you will just be a knowing, I'm safe. May God help you. May God help me in that. Amen. Then you will know that I am the Lord, your God. Great. Next one. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36. Verse 26-27 I will give you a new heart with a new spirit in you. I will remove from you the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my, my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Then you will live in the land that I give you. You will be my people and I will be your God. Just confirming that again. Ezekiel 37, from verse 4, 7 and 8. Let's quickly read, quickly read from this one. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord. So many times you'll find in the book Ezekiel how the Spirit lifted him up, took him here, took him there. When you walk in the Spirit, when you are giving yourself, when you are prepared to stand in on attention with, with respectful openness, to whatever he's going to say to you, you will be led by the Spirit. The Spirit will be able to take you and you will go wherever the Spirit is wanting you to go. Here, the Spirit of God is taking him and said, he sent me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. There's a song. Those bones are not true. Right bones. No? Not true? Something like that. Yeah. Neil says, yes, yes. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great, a great, great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I mean, God knows. I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. You want to have answers to your questions. First of all, acknowledge that He has the answer. You have a lot of questions, and even God can ask you the question. And he knows the answer. Why is he asking you the question?
because he wants you to focus on him. He wants you to realize and to declare that he and he alone has the answer. God wants you to speak it out, to believe it, to declare it, that he and he alone has the answer. So he will put you, not the devil, he will put you in front of all the dry bones. Verse 4. Then he said to me, verse 4, prophesy to these bones and say to them, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Now come on, my brother, my sister, you can have a lot of dry bones in your life. You can see a lot of dry bones in other people, you, you know, that you can stand on right and wrong and how wrong the bones are lying. This is wrong and that bone is not supposed to be there and this bone is... And you can, for this valley of thousands and thousands of, of men, and women, I don't know, women, part of the religion, and try to sort out those thousands of bones to get the right bone to the right bone. Oh, Lord have mercy. And it will not, you will, it will not work. But to speak to the dry bones and say, tell them how dry they are. Oh no, not to tell them what the governments are doing wrong and what the nations are doing wrong and what's wrong with this and what's wrong with that. Yes, 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 but never end with just the facts of the dry bones. You need to speak truth over the dry bones in your life. Truth over the dry bones in your finances, in your emotions, in your weak points, in relationships. You need to speak truth over the dry bones. God not going to take the dry bones away, but He's going to change it. He's going to use it in a miracle. So the dry bones are there. God took you into a place where the dry bones are and to show himself and to give you the miracle in what his purpose is all about. Hallelujah. Let's go. Verse 7. So I prophesied as I was commanded. I prophesied as I was commanded. You can take the word and you speak a lot of stuff. Speak what God has commanded you to speak. Get the words from the word of what you are supposed to speak. And I, as I was prophesying, there was a noise of rattling sound. A rattling sound. And the bones came together. There was a noise, a rattling sound. My brother, I don't know if you know, sister, I don't know if you know, sometimes when you make the decision, say, I'm going to do this right. And you start to speak the word. And you start to confess the word. You start to speak the word. And then it seems like it's going worse. Maybe only in my life it happens, not in you. But it's like it's going worse. You know, everything was at least silent. You know, you saw all the dry bones, and suddenly all these bones are speaking. These are rattling, it's a noise, man. You start to speak the word, you start to claim the word, you start to say what God is saying, and what now? There's a hell of a noise. And a rattling. Don't stop. Because maybe that noise and rattling is not going to take one minute or ten seconds. Maybe it's going to be a process for all those thousands of bones to find the right other bone. <clears throat> noise. There was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. Alignment came. Alignment, accurate alignment to your situation. Alignment. That when you know the answers, when you know the strategy, when you know the alignment, don't run with that. Don't go and try and pick up Mr. Bowles. It's not going to work. It's going to take, you know what will happen. But then we get discouraged because we felt we have the strategy, we have the light. Things start to happen. And then we run with it. But God didn't say that now go and run with the breakthrough and the miracle that you see. Stay with the Spirit. Stay with the Spirit. Amen? You with me? Yeah. Verse 8. I looked and tendons and flesh appeared on them and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. No breath in them. Now come on, guys. Think to yourself, you're standing in this valley, 
There's thousands and thousands of boats, and suddenly this rattling sound, and suddenly this amazing miracle. Suddenly you can see what actually happened. And there's all these patterns, all these answers, all these strategies, all these things falling in line. And next moment, tendons and flesh and everything and skin. There's a lot of people. What a heaven of a miracle. And there was such an excitement. You go into the nations and you will, they will stand all amazed at the miracle of what you've seen. They will be so amazed about the miracle of what they've seen that you've witnessed. That he stood there because the Spirit of God didn't take him.